I will say as an escape as a disclaimer, the following conversation is not a form of advice to use AI software like chat GPT for any financial planning advice, but there have been plenty of articles and opinion pieces on the use of platforms and uh, AI software like chat GPT for people to make some form of financial decisions. But just how good is it when it comes to giving advice on investments and finance and especially given that there are risks involved and also the fact that there isn't a licensed and qualified financial advisor at the other end of the line. And to discuss this, Tara Nicholson is the operations manager at Just Money. So just for that disclaimer, this is not an indication or a prompt for people to go and ask ChatBT <laughs> or Google Bob or Bing AI's um, uh, platform for financial advice. But there's been plenty of conversation of people asking just how good would an AI model be in providing some form of data analytics to make a decision when it comes to investment and also some financial advice? Good morning, Sarah. Good morning. Like so many aspects uh, and topics thrown at chat B, uh, chat GPT and the like, is it only a matter of time before uh, people have started asking uh, platforms like chat GPT for financial advice and some tips on where to invest some of their money? Absolutely. It's a hot topic at the moment. And I mean, if we're just talking about, you know, the numbers of people that have actually been using it, when when the software actually uh, launched within the first week, um, it had a million users and it's currently at more than 100 million users. So it makes sense that people are asking and talking about it and want to understand you know, how it could potentially impact their financial situation or how it can be used to help make financial decisions. But you did mention the disclaimer, and I think it's really important to remember that currently ChatGPT is in research phase. It is free for people to go and use, but it is important that you know, they're quite clear about the fact that it's it's um, there to really get external feedback to improve systems and make it safer. So be aware that when mm. if you are playing around it and, and trying to, to use it, that you do understand that it is mm. research phase. It's collecting data and, you know, you need to take the information and, and just make sure it's, it's correct. You need to use your own human intelligence um, to make the right decisions and use this as a guide and not as a form mm. of final decisions or, or information. Because we have certainly entered into a, a new reality. Is there, is there going to be a time when machine learning will improve to such an extent that it could be used to get real-time data of market trends, of, of numbers coming through to be used as some sort of of an investment tool of of course I hope with the this the safeguards, the safety rails and, and the, the regulation that I believe ought to come along with it. Absolutely. I mean, look, if we, let's ha take a look at some of the, the examples of how it could potentially benefit us. I mean, as you said, data analysis, um, potentially looking at some good investment strategies. So a couple of things would be, you know, getting some improved data analysis. You can use the AI algorithms, which can then analyze huge amounts of financial data very quickly and quite accurately. And this could then allow for a lot more comprehensive financial planning because it's considering a lot more factors such as your income, your expenses, your investments and goals, and then it can provide personalized recommendations, but based on massive amount of information that it's collected. You know, it would take us months and years, and which it has for many financial advisors, for example, to collect this amount of data, but it does it in a couple of seconds. Mm -hmm. um, our, our current yeah. f financial system in South Africa is that anyone who provides some form of financial planning advice needs to be be registered um as you continue to stress um ai 
software models are in research phase. But when we talk about regulation and particularly the safeguarding uh, from uh, from abuse, uh, do you think this is a conversation that the South African authorities are going to have to grapple with hopefully sooner rather than later as um, AI data models become more prevalent in our everyday use? Absolutely. I think, you know, it's happened so fast and so quickly that it is going to take a moment for us to catch up. But we we definitely need to be looking at, you know, what the regulations would be around this because we've put these things in place to ensure that people make the right choices and, you know, that we're protecting our finances is something that's so important in in South Africa. And this tool has its limitations. Um, It very clearly states on their site that, it may occasionally generate increased information um, and it does have limited knowledge of the world events after 2021 because, again, this is in research phase. So, as we've said before, make sure that whatever you're testing and, and trying out, um, you do take it within consideration and, and caution. Sarah Nicholson, Operations Manager at Just Money. Thanks for joining us on Money.